If you've been thinking about doing some figure carving, a ram's head is an excellent place to start. They can be relatively simple. They don't have to have a lot of detail for people to know that they are, in fact, supposed to be a ram's head. So today, I thought we would make a simple ram's head out of a piece of half-inch square bar, and then maybe we'll turn this into a hook or something. There's lots of things you can do with a ram's head. They make great finial ends for pokers. They make good hooks. They look good on the handle for a letter opener or something like that. Use your imagination. There's lots of places you can put a very simple ram's head like this. This isn't going to be a highly detailed ram's head. This is just suggestive. It's kind of a caricature of what a ram's head looks like. If you ever get a chance to see ram's heads made by Daryl Nelson, they are spectacular and they are very lifelike. They're ready to jump right off the bar and go out and graze on some grass. But that's not what we're going to do today. This is real simple, good place for you to start if you're just learning to make ram's heads. This happens to be an eight inch piece of bar, but it's what happened to be laying around next to the saw. And since somebody sent me this nice metric ruler, that's 200 millimeters. The first thing I want to do is draw out a square taper. And this is what will become the horns. Actually, I should correct myself. I actually want kind of a flat taper. When I split the two horns apart, I'm going to want two square horns. So I want this twice as wide as it is thick. I hope that makes sense. We can refine the horns after we split it. But it's easier to draw the taper out with both horns connected than it is to split it and then try to draw this taper out. So that'll be the next step. We'll take a chisel and we will split the horns apart. So I'll put this under a hole down so it stays put while I chisel it. This may take a couple of heats. You really want to get these centered. So when you start, take a close look at where your chisel is. You still have time to correct it if it's off. And I was off just a little bit, so I've got that back in the center. And of course you could cut this with a, an angle grinder and a cut off disc. But you'll lose a fair amount of your material there, so you need to start with extra. Okay, that's a good line that we can follow now. And of course, another way you could do this would be with a bandsaw. But it just does not take that long to do this with a chisel. And you're going to have to have it hot pretty quick here anyway, so you might as well just forge the whole thing. Oh, a hacksaw would be an option too. So that's pretty much our split there. I'm going to put it in the vise and work down a little bit, and then I'll open it up and do a little hot rasping. And just finish cleaning that split up all the way to the bottom, make it nice and neat, and I can open it up a little bit. And I just want to file the little bit of a burr that splitting creates. So we filed the burr off of this and we've got a nice split. And this is a good time to square up these horns because they're not quite perfectly square in cross section. So we're going to do that next. We just want to square this up. And again, you're squaring up each horn, not the whole bar.
This is a good time to think a little bit about what you want to do in the long run with this. Some people like to twist the horns, some people like to put little chisel cuts. If you're going to twist them, leaving them square is probably a good idea. If you're going to chisel them, you might want to knock the corners down, maybe even round them up. Just depends on what you want to do with the horns to make them look more like a real ram's horn. I think I'm going to take just the sharp corners off, which I can still do at this low heat. All I'm doing is just dubbing that back enough so that it isn't going to be rough and uncomfortable for people that touch it. But that's really all we got to do. Our next step is going to be to bend this back. And you want to make it a fairly short bend. If you bend too much back, you end up with a real long snout on your ram. So you want to keep this as short as you can. So just a real short bend, about the thickness of your material. So I'm going to put a half inch off the edge there. I'm working that at the edge of the anvil so I can kind of upset this corner back down there. Now if you pay attention to what you're doing and you look at these forms like this, what I see right there is that's the beginning of a nice snail. So if you don't go any further and you coil this up, you might get a snail. But I don't want a snail, so we're going to keep bending that back further. Until it's doubled all the way back. Now be careful of these horns, you want to keep your hand well away from there. Now we can draw out a little bit of a snout, round up under his chin here. And try and get everything straight and in line before you go too far. And if you're paying attention again, now I'm starting to see maybe a longhorn steer in this. I'm going to do some half face blows on about half of the face here. And I'm going to come back and set them from corner to corner. What I'm trying to do is create an eye socket effect here. So I should have a little flat place where I can put his eyes. And you could use a fuller and the vise for this like we did when we did the, uh, the wizard heads. Or the, uh, the dragon. But I'm trying to do this as much with as few specialty tools as we can get away with. Now we've pushed the front of his nose out a little bit, giving him kind of a hollow spot. I'm just trying to dub those corners back in. Give them a face that looks right. If you decide to go to a different animal, pay attention to what that animal really looks like. Well, I think we're getting pretty close to a nice, nice ram here. We're going to go to the vise, we're going to do the eyes, we're going to do a mouth, and then we'll deal with the horns. So for his mouth, I'm just going to use a thin bladed hot chisel. You could certainly use the same chisel for the splitting of the horns and for the mouth. And then I need a small eye punch. This is just a, a hollow divot, very similar to a rivet set, but it's got a sharper edge than you'd have on a rivet set. And these are the only two tools we really need to create facial features for a simple ram's head like this. I think I'll put it in this vise block that'll hold it solid while I work on it in the vise. You don't have to use this, it's just kind of a nice thing if you have it. 
and it allows the, the head to sit up where you can get at it a little bit easier. And I'm going to hope that I'm not... I'm going to hope that I'm not right in your way from in the camera there, but I might be. In this first heat, I really just want to establish where the eyes are going to go. And then I will come back in a second heat and set them deeper. But you should already be able to see that he's getting some definition of eyes there. So we just go right back to where we were. This twists as you do this, so work side to side to try and keep the twist even. That's probably as deep as the eyes really need to be. There's enough heat here left to do a little mouth. Really, you're just creating a line that defines a mouth. If you really want to get into it, you can worry about getting it all the way open and putting a tongue in and all that kind of stuff. That isn't the point today. Actually, there's one more thing we need to do, and we'll need one more tool for that. And that is just a center punch to create some nostrils. I mean, after all, without nostrils, how would he smell? Probably just awful, just like he does with nostrils. But in any case, and you can use the center punch then to put a couple little pupils in the eyes. Don't need to go very deep there. I'm going to try to put a twist in his horns here. This is something that's always a little bit tough to do because they taper, they're short, hard to get a hold of. I'm going to try vice grips to grip right about there to start. And you've got to start where it's fat and work your way out. do each horn a little at a time so I do them the same. Now this one I was twisting clockwise which means I want to twist this other one counterclockwise. This one's already hot. I'll just continue with it for the next step and then go back to the other one. You certainly don't have to twist these. This is an optional step. It does look good, but it just adds to the fiddly part of it. And as you go, you'll probably have to start adjusting the vice grips. When you get to the point, you'll be able to put them right on the tip.
certainly a good place for a torch. Try to even these up. Try not to forge them too much because you'll take the character out of the twist. Wouldn't be a bad place for a rawhide mallet. This is some place you, you need to work left-handed and right-handed both. And just kind of get started bending those. I think a pair of these Scrolling pliers might be the best way to bend these up. And try and keep them even and not kinky. It's real easy to get kinks in this. That's not bad there. I think I'll do the same with the other one. And you can roll these up as tight or as loose as you want. And I typically like to tuck the tip of the horn down inside, even though on a, a real ram they typically are higher. I do that so that if you're using this as a hook, people are less likely to snag the coat they're hanging on the hook or something like that on there. So it's, it's a little less realistic that way, but it is a better functional piece that way. Try and get it all straightened out as best you can. Luckily it's a project that doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical to still look good. He's got a little bit of a wobble there. I think I'll take that out in the vise. And then the next thing we'll need to do is bend it around. You can leave it straight like this for a lot of things, but I tend to like them looking forward. It probably wouldn't hurt to do this step before you bend the horns because they can get in the way. But if you've got just the right bending fork, you should be okay. That's kind of the way I like mine to look. That also brings the horns up above his head a little bit more when you bend it like that. And I think that really looks pretty good. And while we're here is a good time to kind of straighten it out a little bit. Not a bad time for quick wire brush either. So now we just need to turn that into a hook and that's the easy part. The ram is the important part. Now we just need to draw this out so we can make a hook out of it. to see if I have a pair of tongs that will hold this further back. I would actually like to draw the hook out clear up into this area. Yeah, these seem to be about the best I've got. Not the most secure grip, but they will get the job done. Of course, if you want a big, heavy, half-inch hook, you don't have to do this. I just don't like hooks that heavy.
You can tell winter's coming on, stuff cools off a lot faster. Of course, if you had something, oh, like a brand new self-contained air hammer, you could do this really fast. But it doesn't take that long to do it at the anvil. I think we need to punch a hole in there so we can hang this hook on the wall. I'm going to start the hole from the back. That way I can do it right at the edge of the anvil. And then when I flip it over, which it doesn't really want to flip over, It's easy to bring it over here to the pritchel hole. That leaves a nice hole. A nice swell around it. Now I just want to straighten this out some. The saddle works well, but you don't have to have one. Then we should be done with the head end of the, the ram. Still got one horn that sticks out further than the other. So I'll we'll turn it around and finish the hook. And I think for this hook, I'm just going to back bend that just a little bit. I'm not going to put a full curl or scroll on it. This is just up to what you want for your hook. Or like I say, these ram's heads make nice poker handles. They make nice uh, they make nice handles for letter openers, things like that. You can do a lot of stuff with the ram's heads. I think something just like that is what I'm after. There's our ram's head hook. Well, here is our completed ram's head hook. Still almost too hot to hold with a glove, so I'm going to put it down here pretty quick. Still steaming from putting a little bit of paste wax in it. But we'll show you a close-up at the very end of the video so you can see what it looks like. This is a great place to start if you've never done any kind of figure carving. All you really need is the chisel, an eyeball punch, and a center punch. You probably already have a chisel and a center punch, so you just need to make the eyeball punch. And we've shown that here before, and I'll link to that up here in the corner so you can see what you need to do to make a little eyeball punch. They're really not that difficult to make. Like most projects of this sort, the more of these you do, the better they will get. I haven't done a ram's head in several years, so one horn is up a little bit and they're a little bit off. But if you practice these, if you take the time to do several of them, just after three or four, they'll start to look better. This is another thing you can add to your list of gift ideas for you to give in the upcoming holiday season, whether it's a ram's head hook, ram's head bottle opener, ram's head letter opener, ram's head poker, ram's head forks, spatulas, whole set of barbecue tools. Use your imagination. This is just an element. I simply chose to put it on a hook. You can use it for just about anything you want. You might even be able to figure out a way to just make a simple ram's head key fob or something. But remember, if somebody's going to put this in their pocket, it'll probably need to be smaller. Then you really do need to make sure the tips of those horns don't stick out to snag anything. As I mentioned while we were forging this, at a few different stages, it looks like something different. At one point, it resembled a snail, and you could have easily gone that direction and made a snail out of it. At another point, it resembled a longhorn steer. You could have gone that way with it. And if you use your imagination, you can probably come up with some other animals that would start exactly like this 
with a long taper, splitting the horns, spreading them, and then see where you go with that. Anyways, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to watch some more of the videos. Share the videos with your friends. But then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, challenge your imagination, develop some new skills, but do so safely. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.